November 7, 2020. Today, I will read about, read the contents of chapter 13. This is called Arakam Uraymai in Tamil, and it is translated in several ways. Briefly, it could be called self-control or self-restraint. The possession of self-restraint is very important for a for success in life. So self-control is the ability to regulate one's emotions, thoughts, and behavior in the face of temptations and impulses. As an executive function, self-control is necessary for regulating one's behavior in order to achieve specific goals. Being high in controlling our desires and impulses is important in achieving the goals we set for ourselves. In the classic marshmallow experiment, Walter Mitchell and his colleagues gave children a marshmallow and explained that they would get another one if they managed not to eat it until the experimenter returned. Those who were able to control their impulses and delay gratification were found years later to have, to have higher academic achievements. This was Michel, famous Michel experiment reported in 2014. Being able to manage and regulate needs, desires, and emotions are thus vital to performing well academically and sticking to tasks. This chapter talks about a life lived with controlled mind, speech, and action. <clears throat> so the importance is, in addition to developing self-control, it's, it's easy, it's possible for anybody to show self-control under specific circumstances now and then. But to be always self-controlled, that is to live a life lived with self-control. That's what is being mentioned here. And this quality includes the control of five sense organs, control of speech, and control of anger. Self-control does not mean doing nothing. It means the ability to discriminate between good and bad deeds, diverting the senses from evil and guiding them towards good deeds. Self-control Living, living self-control living represents a life lived without pomp or pride and conducting oneself within proper limits. So what are the habits to develop? The habit can be mentioned as the ability to restrain oneself, the ability to avoid the temptation, or the habit of showmanship even when facing one of lesser position, such as one student, one's employee, someone younger in, younger in age, etc. Now we'll read the, <clears throat> and give a paraphrase, simple paraphrase of the 10 couplets of this chapter. This I'm taking mostly from the one given by Sadhguru Sivaya Subramanya Swami of Kauai Adinam in Hawaii. This is one of the translations that I find easy to follow because it's a very simple modern American English. This Sivaya Subramanya Swami has translated Tirkural, the first 108 chapters, 1080 couplets and his book is entitled Weaver's Wisdom. Weaver's Wisdom, because Vallur was a weaver, ancient preserves for a perfect life. Couple 121. Self-control will place a man among the heavenly souls. The want of it will drive him into the thickest darkness of hell. Of course, this is poetic exaggeration, but uh, again, the following couplets also explain the same thing in a different way. Uh, 
a man who exhibits self-control, who is able to keep his cool and not emotionally uh, disturbed and uh, give emotional outbursts, or makes an uh, a, it's a action and then regret later, such people, they are, they are the leaders usually, and they have the uh, respect of everybody. And so in that sense, they will have a very happy life. They'll be treated as if they are angels or heavenly uh, bodies, de deities. And those who don't show it will be condemned and will, will, will not rise at all, will have problems wherever they go. So this is uh, the merit of self-control. Couple at 122. Guard yourself, I'm sorry, guard your self-control as a precious treasure, for there's no greater wealth in life than this. So it is, uh, first you must develop it and you must maintain it. It's, uh, that's a, once you achieve that, it's one of those things that will guarantee success and hence accumulation of wealth or property and so on. So there's no greater wealth than self-control. Again, importance of self-control. Couple at 123. Comprehending and acquiring self-control confers upon one the esteem of wise men. So it is uh, very important and very useful to get the esteem of wise people. And that's, pos that's possible only when you have that, uh, <clears throat> understand the importance and understand what is self-control and then practicing it. 124, the eminence of one who doesn't diverge from the right path and remains restrained will be more imposing than a mountain. Again, merit of self-control. We have seen that, you know, anybody who is who keeps his cool, who doesn't get uh, uh, angry for nothing, uh, who doesn't act on an impulse, and who are able to, on a crisis or any time, they, they are able to maintain their balance and equanimity, and all that comes from self-control, and they command respect. Couple at 125. Humility is a precious quality in all people, but it has rare richness in the rich. So, um, if one is very rich or very powerful or high in position, and it, it is easy to lose self control or lose humility, but they can still command. Uh, and achieve certain things, achieve many things by commanding and demanding. But if they are also exhibit self-control self and exhibit humility, then that adds to their strength. And that's what is meant here. So it's a rare richness in the rich. Couple at 126, like a tortoise, withdrawing five limbs into its shell, those who re restrain the five senses in one life, will find safe shelter for seven. So this couplet is the importance of the control of all five senses. So self-control means you know, the, we act through our senses, the uh, karmendriyas, as they are called in Sanskrit, the working organs, uh, <clears throat> which go out and get uh, interact with the world, like seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting, speaking. So tongue does tasting as well as speaking. So the metaphor is like a tortoise. So to withdraw the senses and from outside temptation so that keeping keep them under control and mind should be able to, mind and brain should be able to control the senses and make them do what is productive and what is good. And that's what is given here. So it, it'll, the benefit will go a long ways 
and even after one's passing out, passing away, one's death, the effect of this, the, the benefits accrued and the name and fame will continue. 127. Whatever you may fail to guard, guard well your tongue, for far speech unfailingly invokes anguish and affliction. So this gives the importance of controlling one's tongue. And <clears throat> controlling one's speech. <clears throat> so interacting with the rest of the world, the especially with other human, other fellow beings, colleagues, uh, <clears throat> friends, with all interactions, most of the time, problem comes by because we say something without thinking and that could result in result in bad bad feelings and bad hurt and so on so this most important self con uh, important sense to be controlled and the uh, three couplets emphasize the importance of controlling one's speech. Number 128, if there's one word which produces the results of harmful words, all good intentions will come to naught. And there's another couplet stressing the importance of controlling one's speech because one can be nice and smooth and pleasant all the time. But it, uh, it requires only one occasion when there's an outburst or when there's a harsh word, when there's a uh, hurting word, hurtful speech, just once that will ruin all the, all the good name that was obtained for all the good, soft and pleasant talk. Couple 129. The wound caused by fire heals in, in its time. The burn inflicted by an inflamed tongue never heals. This again, importance of controlling one's speed. This is a famous couplet. If you, if you imagine, you see, this is uh, something to remember and will help us follow and control our tongue. Because, you know, people do get burned uh, by touching uh, hot iron when they're when they pressing their dress or in cooking. You see, people often get either small or big burns and there will be a wound, but it will it'll heal, you know, in, in due course. And then people forget it. They won't think of that heal. Even if there's a scar, they won't remember that and, unless it's brought to their attention. But the hurt due to a harsh speech, hurtful word, that will never be forgotten. And so you must remember that, you know, it is uh, such a strong thing. So it's very important to control one's speech. Number 130. Virtue will wait, wait in the streets to meet a man possessed of learning and self-disciplined, his anger subdued. So this again is the climax to sum up everything, the importance and the merit of self-control and importance of mind control, anger control, thought control, behavior control, everything. So virtue is personified as if virtue is, a, is an angel or as a deity. Or, so in that sense, one, one who can practice and maintain self-control, all virtues will automatically follow the virtues of pleasant talk, virtues of uh, impartiality, all, all those things and other virtues that we are going to talk about in future, in the next part of the chapters, all of them will be, will follow. That's what is meant by virtue will wait in the streets to meet a man. So uh, for others, they will have to go in such and then work hard to develop the virtues, whereas one who has self-restraint, self it's as if 
virtue comes in search of them, wants to be with them. Okay, I'll continue. Uh, I'll stop here and let us continue this topic with discussion on how to develop the willpower to possess self-restraint.